Let's trace this program called Two Dimensional Array Demo 1. Here we have a client program with uh, the following variables all initialized to zero. And we have a two dimensional array because it has two sets of square brackets here and it has five rows and three columns. The first number is always the number of rows and the second number is the number of columns. When you instantiate an array this way, rows go sideways, columns go up and down. So I'm being careful here to draw five rows and three columns. That, of course, holds enough, uh, has enough space to hold 15 values. And in this case, they're going to be whole numbers because of uh, the int data type. Uh, we also have a variable row sum initialized to zero. As you see, column sum, <coughs> team average 0, 0.0 because it's a double, and column averages, which is a one-dimensional array. I don't have room really, but uh, I'll squeeze it in maybe uh, down here. Column averages. Its uh, length is 3, so it has positions numbered 0, 1, and 2. And I'm just going to abbreviate. CA is the name of that array because I don't have right room to write it all out. Okay, the tricky part of this code is to trace the double nested for loop. We begin with uh, initializing row to 0. No, oh, it's already 0, but I'll just emphasize that fact with another 0. And then we go into the, into the body of that outer loop and we hit this for loop, column equals 0. Okay, and we hit this line of code, scores row call equals. So we're putting some value into, we're assigning some value into scores position 0, 0, because that's what those two uh, variables are equal to right now. Oh, I forgot to label my, my, uh, my scratch paper here. These are the columns, and these are the rows numbered 0 through whatever. And this whole thing is the array named scores. I guess I should write the name of it uh, somewhere here. Okay, so what the heck is this on the right-hand side here? Oh, it's a random number. Some random number between 0 and 1, such as like 0.5, is being multiplied with 300. Okay, so that's 150. And 150 plus 1 is 151. And uh, we're turning that into a whole number, well, because technically it was a... Point, this was 0.5, and this would be 0 0.0, and we're chopping off that 0 0.0 by using the typecasting operator int. And so the number 151, I'm just made up this uh, 0.5, the math.random could be anything between 0 and 1. This 151 is being assigned into the aforementioned position of scores. So we just put a, courtesy of the computer's random number generator, we just put a 151 there. And then we're system out printing something. We're printing out bowler number. So in your output window somewhere, on the output screen, it'll say bowler number sign, and then concatenated to that, the variable row plus one. Well, row is currently zero, and zero plus one is one, so the one's gonna come out. Then we're concatenating to the phrase score in game number and again we're adding one artificially here to column so column is 0 and 0 plus 1 is 1 and then we're putting out the word is and then we're uh, pulling out the value that's currently stored in position 0 0 of scores now that's the 151 again so a 151 shows up here why do you think we added the plus one here and here? Yeah, so that it didn't say bowler zeros score in game zero. This is just a fundamental problem. In computer science, arrays, in two-dimensional arrays in this case, start uh, numbering at position zero. And no bowler wants to be known as bowler number zero. And you would not talk about game number zero. So it's your job as the programmer to add one so that your output is user friendly. So be careful of that. Uh, you know, add the one here. Don't add the one anywhere in your actual code. That, that would not make sense. All that work just to have one uh, random number plugged in here. Uh, well, trust me that because of the way this uh, 
this whole thing iterates, the inner for loop is going to cycle around three times. And column is going to plus plus to one and two, and we're going to get uh, random numbers between between uh, 0 and 299.9 will be uh, possible numbers. And then eventually, when column bumps up to 3, this will become false. We will not iterate the inner for loop again, uh, at which point we drop down to this curly brace, which tells us to loop back up to this curly brace. And at that point, we row plus plus and row bumps up to 1. Well, that's a good thing because row 0 is filled up and we're now ready to populate row 1 with random numbers. At which point, column resets to 0. It was at a 3 and now it resets to 0 there. And we have a random number that plugs in there, another random number that plugs in there, and another random number as we column plus plus and cycle around this inner loop three times, we end up putting another random number there. Okay, and then we come back up again to the outer for loop, row plus pluses, row plus pluses to two, and we reset column at that point from the number three that it was back to zero again. So we're back on the zeroth column, but in row number two where it proceeds to fill in random numbers. Wow, this guy's a bad bowler. He has numbers that are very small here, but that's just the way the random number uh, is rolled, and uh, so on. This double nested for loop will execute uh, uh, the outer for loop five times and the inner loop three times, and because the inner for loop recycles each time, it will fill up this array, two-dimensional array that has 15 uh, positions. Scrolling down to look at this section of the program, we see that again we have uh, the variables row and column. These two for loops are almost identical, and they probably are identical to the for loops up above, but instead of generating random numbers here, we're using this counter statement, accumulator statement uh, sometimes called, to accumulate and add up all of the elements up above. And uh, just trust me that because of the 5 and the 3 and the plus pluses, every single number up here will be added in. Uh, every number that ends up being in here will be added into that total for sum. At which point, uh, the code drops down to here. Because the order of operations causes this typecasting to execute first, as if there was a set of parentheses here, that sum, whatever it ends up being, it's a random number, so I have no idea. Let's say it's 20,000. That number 20,000 will have a point zero added on to it because of the word double here. And then we're dividing by 15. And let's just say that that team average works out to be a, a 150.2. And uh, the program then prints out the team's average is 152, 150.2. Scrolling down to look at this portion of the program, again, we have a double nested for loop. We're reusing row and column. They're being reset at zero so that everything works fine. Again, we have five and three here. Oh, it's interesting. We system out print something before we hit this inner for loop. That's going to cause each bowler's number to appear. Then because of this tab, backslash t is a tab, neatly lined up in columns because of this tab also, these scores will show up um, on the same line as the bowler number. So bowler number one, I forget what the numbers were above, I'm just making numbers up here. Bowler number one might have a 50 and then tab 100, tab 150, at which point this print LN will cause the uh, blinking cursor to move down to the next line of your output window and when you then recycle back up to the outer for loop in row plus plus, you end up printing out the information for bowler number one. Uh, I'm sorry, bowler number two, if you want to look at it that way, which is really row number one up above. Get it? Bowler one is the information that's found in row zero. Bowler two 
has his or her information in row one, etc. So accounting for the, that fact and providing a nice user interface, the, the people will see, actually they'll see the phrase bowler number right here. So it's going to say bowler number ones apostrophe s scores will be printed out in here and then 50 100 150 and then bowler number twos scores will be uh, three numbers and then bowler number three blah 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 number four and number five and then the program will, will have stopped in this portion of the program. So that whole little section uses a, uses a double nested for loop to neatly print the data that's stored in the two-dimensional array using tabs. And pay attention here. We have a print, we have a print, and we have a print LN. That will make it look nice and neat on the uh, output window. Uh, this section of the demo program we're, again, we're using the double nested for loop. We're resetting our row sum. And because of uh, the way this code works, we will be adding up the three numbers in each row. Let's just pretend that this is uh, 672. Let's pretend that these three numbers add up to 350. Let's pretend that these three numbers add up to 116, and so on. So uh, check it out if you want to type it into a compiler, but uh, or just trust me, this section of the program prints out those averages, those row sums, I meant to say. Here on the, the uh, sort of last part of the program, we're computing column averages. Now, I don't have time to trace this right now. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. But notice what's different about this pair of for loops compared to the double nested for loops up above. We have column being used here on the outer for loop and row on the inner one, not the reverse way around like we had seen before. And we're resetting column sum to zero rather than row sum like we did earlier. And here again, we have column sum being used instead of row sum. So because of this reversal, we will be adding up the five columns separate totals perhaps the first uh, set of three numbers might be like 400 here oh no I drew that wrong uh, this should be five rows with three columns and what we are doing now is we're adding up the numbers that are in each column into a column sum and we're dividing that by five, not three, because we have five numbers here. And we're going to be uh, dividing that by uh, five. So this might be the number like 522. This column might add up to the number 783, and so on. Um, you know, this is uh, really no harder to trace this code than the code up above. So I'll leave that as an exercise for you to trace.